Hey folks, Ned Pyle here again. Uh, if you're watching this, Server 2008 end of support is about to happen or has just happened, and you have many file servers and want to know what to do. Um, you've probably seen some other videos from me talking about how to get extended support updates or migrate uh, systems to Azure, but when it comes down to it, um, you have 2008 servers that you want to seize to be 2008 servers. The real strategy is not to keep band-aiding a, a dead platform from 10 years ago, but instead get to a modern platform, like say Windows Server 2019, which has not just architectural security updates that will never come to 2008, but huge sets of new features and capabilities and options that were never there 10 years ago because Windows has moved on. So uh, I'm gonna do a demo today talking about the storage migration service and how you would use it to take your 2008 or 2003 uh, or 2012 servers and using a very simple, um, straightforward phased approach of inventory and transfer and cutover, take all the data, take all the configuration, take all the names, take all the security, take everything that you need to move it from one server that's old onto a new server which is new and not lose anything in the process. And in fact, your users and applications um, when it's done will have no idea that anything happened. So let me start this demo up right now. So I'm setting up uh, SMS. I have never installed it. I'm going to click the install button here and it'll make sure the orchestrator service is installed on my machine where I'm going to run SMS migrations from. I'm going to go ahead and create a job. If you've used SMS in the past, this all looks similar. And now, now you're going to see though that I have support for clusters. That is something that was added new in August of 2019. And Linux servers, I support Samba devices. That's also new. So I have my job. I now need to put in some credentials, some administrator credentials on the source that will work and allow me to run around and um, take a look at these machines through the inventory process. And uh, I click Next. And you'll also see that I'm now going to add some devices. I'm going to add in some source machines. And in the past, I would type these in. Now I also have the option to do an Active Directory search with wildcards. So if I just search right now for some of my servers that I know exist, here's FSO8. I can add them without having to go and type them and perhaps mistype them. So I'll put in FS12 here as well. That's my 2012 server. And I'm ready to start my inventory. So I click Start Scan. And this inventory is running around, um, checking permissions, network settings, um, storage, file count. You can see all these pieces. I can look at the details of these. I can see all the shares on this source machine. I can see the configuration. I can see which network adapters, what their IP addresses are. I can see what storage configuration is. And if I go and look at the actual source machines, I'll see these exact same shares, right? You can see them right here, just like you saw in uh, WAC. And they will have their permissions on them that I'm also capturing. And perhaps, you know, even more interestingly, if I look over on this 2012 server um, and I log in here and take a look at its shares and storage, I'll start seeing some pieces that I really want to be able to capture that things like Robocopy won't get for me. Like, for example, this one has shares on it, but it has local user accounts being used. So like the IT staff account right there is obviously a local group coming from this machine that if I was to Robocopy that data or recreate that share, that that group wouldn't be there anymore. Its memberships wouldn't be there anymore. And so one of the things that came also in the August update of SMS was the ability to do local user and group migrations. And this is something that if you were to use other copy tools, you wouldn't get. So take a look at my files. I've got everything I'm ready to go and start my transfer phase. So I've clicked next, and now I'm loading up into the transfer phase. I'm gonna put in some destination credentials now. Previously, I'd put in some inventory source credentials. These administrative creds will be used for transferring data and settings. So I have my source and destination servers already um, set. I have FSO8, and I need to now specify a destination to match, right? So if I use my new option to search AD, I've set aside some servers here, 2019 servers. I am gonna go ahead and scan this one. 
and that's checking to make sure that it has uh, matching storage, enough storage, you know, the server exists, etc. And then uh, choose next. And I will do the exact same thing now for another server to destination to FS12. So I type in another name, wildcarding it in this case. Look at my Active Directory. There it is. I'm gonna click Scan. It will match up. You notice that I have a Create New Azure VM option here. Take a look at another demo we have to show what that actually means, where you can create Azure IaaS VMs on the fly. So now I am loading up um, into Just Transfers. Notice now that I have these options um, for renaming accounts, reusing accounts, not transferring. That's for actually migrating local users and groups to keep the security and that fidelity between the source and destination. I click Next. Now I've lined up my servers. I'm going to choose Validate and run the test code to make sure that everything is good to go as far as network settings, firewall. Um, admin creds, the ability to get onto the destination machine, SMB is working, there's enough free space, etc. That way, if you've done your homework on the requirements, you can still double check to make sure the transfer is going to work. So I have my two servers, let's go ahead and click transfer. That's running. It's going to run through these two machines and copy all of those files, uh, recreate those shares, and you can see now this new option that came along in the latest admin center in October of 2019. We have progress, we have speed throughput, we have a time estimate. The first one's already done. I mean, I'm not copying very much data here just for the demo purposes, but you can see here the second one is running. I'm getting a decent line rate for some VMs on some not very good hardware. Uh, you can see how much progress I've made and we're making a ballpark estimate of when the actual migration will be done for all of that data, the transfer phase. This is nice, it gives you a chance to decide if you got time for coffee or lunch or the weekend or however long it's gonna take for your transfer to take up your amount of data. And I can look at those details and remember that I chose to migrate users and groups. You saw an option there briefly. If we click on transfer details and look at say um, transfer log, we save that down error log, migrated users, migrated groups. I can save all these things in nice CSV files, um, not needing some special you know, log parsing type thing or looking in the event viewer. You just open these up in Excel and see everything in plain text. These are all the files that were migrated or files that were missed or skipped or had errors or something if you need to check and see what's going on. They'd all be here you know, in plain English and easy to understand. If we look at that group migration, we can see something that, you know, no other tool like Robocopy or Xcopy or anything is giving you is it's actually SID translating and recreating groups and users on the destination so that you don't lose security when you migrate things that use local security principles. I'm now in the cutover phase. My old credentials are still fine from my previous uh, phases. I'm gonna keep using those. On my 2008 server, I'm going to map up its network interface so I can take over its IP address once it migrates. Same for my 2012, I only have one NIC. I'm gonna go ahead and choose it. But notice that I have these other options. I can do uh, the ability to migrate only one of several NICs. I can choose to um, not migrate any NICs at all if I wanted to actually get rid of the old IP scheme from machines. I actually get the option of this phase to also not even include this device and not migrate it at all, but we are definitely going to migrate it. Let's do next. And now I'm going to adjust settings for um, the migration, the ability to join it to the domain. I'm just using stored credentials, how long it's going to take. And there's this last chance to validate. Um, this validate is our, our piece where we make sure that we believe the cutover is going to work. We've done our meta requirements. We've checked network firewalls. We have administrative credentials on the source and destination. Um, all those pieces that are going to happen in order to take over this identity are going to work. We can take a look at those results, check our work. Seems to look okay, everything's passing. So let's go ahead and start the cutover. And to do that, I literally just have to do uh, press the button and this will begin the process.
You can see that each one is working along. There's a small progress bar there showing a you know, percentage of completion and which phase we're in. I'm going to time compress this because we're rebooting servers, waiting for DNS to register, waiting for AD you know, replication to occur. It could take a while. When it's all done, these two machines are ready to go. Notice I have the option to set up the Azure File Sync piece here on these destination servers. Let's take a look at these destination boxes and see if they look okay. All the shares we were migrating before appear to be here. Here they are. And all of their you know, settings that came along with them, permissions and other values that were custom to the old server, including that local group, which has now been recreated on this new server, which is itself now believes itself to be the old server's name and identity are there. So 100% fidelity, no loss of anything. All my files are here. Even my uh, dirty dog, you might remember from back in the transfer phase. Let's see. There she is, covered in mud. So that was the demo. We went through this simple phased approach. I started with 2008. I ended up with 2019. I got all these new features we were talking about as we went along. And I now have this safe, secure, supported, sort of future-proofed server, you know, until 2000. 30 or when the next time you hit one of these major end of support milestones. Uh, for more information, please go to this URL right here. It shows uh, much more information, gives guidance, gives FAQ, talks about known issues, um, gives a lot of helpful advice on how to get this process going super smoothly so that your file server migration is a success. Thanks.